Hello loyal subscribers and people who want to learn, you're watching my voiceover edition of my 767 auto line tutorial. We're going to jump straight in here, should be a bit clearer than my annotation version so hopefully you learn something new. So what you're going to want to do first is get some charts. If you live in the UK I'll put the link in the description below, it's the UK AIP website, you've got all the aerodromes in the United Kingdom with all the charts and relevant information. If you live in the United States I'm not really sure. You'd probably do a Google search and type in, say, KJFK charts, and you should get a first link to all the charts that you need there. If you live in the UK, the charts are going to look something like this. The only figures we're going to really focus on today is the ILS frequency, which if we zoom in, we can see it's 110.90, and the localizer course, which if we look at the extended center line, we can see it's 079 degrees. If you're an avid VATSIM flyer then you're going to want to really print off these charts because you might need them again along with SID and STAR star charts but if you're, just an, if you're just a casual simmer then it's fine if you go to the flight sim map zoom in on the airfield and if again you click on the extended center line of the runway which is going to be in green this time you're going to get exactly the same things except in flight sim you can see the localizer course is 080 degrees instead of the one degree offset which is 079 in the chart the one degree offset isn't going to really make too much of a difference i mean we can handle a tolerance of one degree it's not exactly going to send us off the runway in somewhere over france or 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 you or the rest of europe so i think we can cope with that but other than that's all the information you really need to go in the pedestal of the 767 so we can tune the ils nice and get the aircraft down okay so what's going to happen we're in the aircraft now. You're going to find yourself in this position. Either flight sim ATC, VAT sim ATC, wherever you fly them. If you've set up properly, you're going to find yourself in this position. You're going to be on a little bit of an angle to the runway, as you can see down there. You're going to be about 3,000 feet, 180 knots, ready to intercept the localizer and ready to get down to the runway and start the auto land. I've taken off all auto gen and all my add on scenery and stuff like that just to help with the frames per second so you've got a nice smooth feel of what it would be like to do. So the airport is roughly over there and uh, we're all set up 180 knots flap 15, 3000 feet. We're all ready to go. As you can see in the FMC, if I go to takeoff page, oh, sorry, not takeoff page, if I go to approach ref, you can see. All the speeds are here, 133 knots for the speeds. Also, you can see the ILS frequency, 110.90, and the course, 079 degrees. is already set in there, but just to cross-reference it against the charts, check it up there as well. I've got the same figures down here. I don't know if you can see it properly. In the frequency box and the course box here, 079 degrees, 110.90. Everything's pretty much set up from this point. That's all you really need. If it was bad weather you could set decision height up here, but it's clear weather and for the tutorial's sake I'll keep it at 200. So I'm going to unpause it and we're going to fly the approach. So we're unpaused, as you can see we're flying on nice and steady. What we're going to do at this point is set auto brakes 1, we're going to arm the speed brakes and we're going to arm approach. The difference from my other tutorial, I actually armed localizer, the lock and then approach afterwards but many people, well, I can't say many people, I had a comment from a user saying he got quite confused on whether you arm the approach lock and, and what sort of stuff goes on there so for the sake we just arm the approach, it does pretty much the same thing as as the other one but just makes things easier. As you can see when I pressed approach all three autopilots engaged ready for the category 3 auto land. Two of my flight directors are on which you need, the auto throttles on and we're just going to intercept the localizer now as you can see it turned heading was originally set in green and lock was originally armed like glide slope here but once we intercept the localizer it starts arming as you can see the glide slope is coming down here and once we intercept GS should become green so what we're going to do I'm going to slow to 160 knots like so, I'm going to drop the gear to get us the speed down, down. and I'm going to add a notch of flaps. flaps 20. 
So the localizer is getting us on course now, and as you can see, glide slope is active, and we're following the glide slope down. So we're going to further reduce our speed to 133 knots, as we've seen in the reference on the FMC page. If you're flying online, ATC usually tells you to maintain 160 knots until I think it's 4 DME. But for the case of the Toyota, we're going to get nice and slow, nice and slippery, ready for the uh, ready for the landing. So at this point the gear is down, we're going to put the nose gear light on and the runway turn off lights. And if you want, I'm going to set this screen to the ILS display. Just to make things a bit clearer and easier. As you can see the localizers here, we're pretty much on straight and level. And the glide slope is here and we're right in the center of it. Runway's over there, we're just going to descend now 2,300 feet. So all that's left here is to pretty much watch. If you're going to fly from the virtual cockpit, then that's the pedestal down here and the ILS frequency box and course box are here. But to make it a bit clearer, there's a pop-up panel here on the radio and everything's pretty much here where you need it. So we're coming down again. I'm going to add four flaps now. Flaps 30. Auto brake 1 is set. Uh, all three autopilots are engaged. Mr. Pro's altitude is set 3000. Speeds are nice and good. And what you do from here, because it's an auto land and you don't really do anything, is monitor the approach. Flare and rollout just armed, and land 3 became active in the auto land stairs. Once we get close to the runway, probably below minimums, then flare should arm and become green down here and rollout should become green as well and what that's going to do is going to keep us tracking on the runway and flare this self-explanatory it's going to flare the aircraft for a softer touchdown Not really much to do from here except to make sure the aircraft's straight and true and everything's looking good. I mean if you was doing this in low visibility obviously you wouldn't be able to see the runway like I can. Now if something went wrong I could take it off and land it myself but in the worst case the visibility would be below a mile and you wouldn't be able to do pretty much anything if something did go wrong so keep your eye on this if you're flying in low visibility and make sure everything is good and proper. Just to add as well, this uh, same procedure pretty much applies to any Boeing aircraft or Airbus if you know the right sort of deal with that. I mean, the ILS frequency boxes and stuff like that pretty much all need the same data. And in the Boeing Captain Sim aircraft, CLS, PMDG 747, in fact, they all pretty much got the same got the same feel and, and procedure to them. So we just keep an eye down here, we're below minimum, so if you couldn't see the runway at this point then you would go around, if you could then you would continue the approach. We're just waiting for flare and rollout to become active, flare is active, idle became active so the engine goes to idle. Rollout is active, planes on the ground will engage reverse thrust. Sixty knots disengage reverse thrust, and I'll disengage the autopilot. As for the message auto brake on here, what I actually did, I I hit my rudder pedals as we hit the ground, and the brake and the brakes got applied, so hence disengaging the auto brakes. But if you try not to hit the brakes like I did then, then the auto brakes should slow the aircraft down, but seeing as he was live, he was able to stop, okay. So that's pretty much all it takes, once you're on the ground, do the usual, turn the lights off, taxi lights on, stop here, flaps up, clean the aircraft, auto brakes off, recall things, make sure it's okay. And that's pretty much all you need to do. 
I hope the voiceover helped you a bit more than the annotation version. I know things would have been more rushed here, but as you can hear me, I thought that I could probably make that sacrifice because things might be a bit clearer. So I hope this helped and uh, happy landings.